Hi, I'd like to talk today about Oracle Business Rules Decision Tables. This is a very focused presentation on decision tables alone. My name is Heidi Bulo. I'm a product manager in the BPM team. Oracle Business Rules is part of the BPM suite. It's also part of the SOA suite. So here's a decision table. So a decision table, it looks very much like a spreadsheet, but it really behaves a little bit differently than a spreadsheet. So let's start on the, on the left-hand side. We have conditions at the top, and we have actions at the bottom. In the middle, we have conflicts, which I'll talk about you know, near to the end. But basically, I have some conditions, and when the conditions are met, then I take an action. The columns, R1, R2, R3, these are the actual rules in the table. And they all use, operate on the same set of conditions, and that's how come we can put them in a decision table in the first place. So the first rule is uh, these three conditions. So there's date, uh, there's amount, and then there's uh, customer status. So if the date, I can say if the date is during, in this particular rule says if the date is during the sale and the VIP status is platinum or silver, okay? And then the order amount is low or medium. And these are our aliases that I've defined. Low is a certain range of a, an amount range. Medium is another amount range. But if these three conditions are met, then I take this discount, 15%, and the status is automatically approved. So this is the first rule, OK? And you know, there's a few different things that are going on here. So first of all, during the sale is a, an alias for a date range, a range of dates. And I've, and I've called it during the sale so that I can read this rule very easily, so I can say, very easily what is happening in this first rule. So these are actually, here's another example. These are list, uh, it's a list of values. So a list of values could be the uh, premium or silver. These are the VIP statuses. These are different values. Or it can be a list of ranges. So with low and medium, these are ranges of amounts. So like maybe maybe uh, from zero, you know, zero, whatever, to 10,000. 10,000 to 20,000, whatever my ranges are, I've defined them as low, medium, high. And so now when I'm looking at my rule, I'm not troubled by the details of the numbers. I can just read the rule very, very clearly. And then if I want to change the, those ranges, I, I change the ranges, but the rule itself remains the same. I don't have to come here and change it. So here we have, um, it's called a you know, value sets or range list of values or list of ranges. And, and we've we're use, actually using that in all three conditions. So at the top, we're using it for dates. So we have a date range for during the sale, before the sale. Um, we're also using it for the VIP status, for premium. These are you know, individual values. And then we're again, we're using it for the amount, the list of ranges for low, medium, high. So here we can see um, uh, a more detail about the list of ranges for the, the dates. So here we have the different date ranges that I can use for dur during the sale or after the sale or before the sale. OK, so here's conflicts. In this table, I have, multi I have two rules that actually would both fire. So the, the, the rule one and rule three are both going to fire because um, rule three doesn't care what the amount is, but the first two conditions are the same as rule one. So I don't know which, you know, the, this, the rule engine doesn't know which rule to take. So do I take rule one or rule three? So the designer can say, can specify the override condition, say, we want to, if, if we get into this situation, then we want rule one to override rule three. So if it's in that, if it's in the low and medium amount, then take uh, the action for rule one, okay? So this is what uh, the decision table looks like in the browser-based tooling. So the SOA Composer or the BPM Composer, they look exactly the same. But the SOA Composer, you're editing the rule that's actually been deployed. So here's a decision table. It looks very similar. I'm going to go back to the previous slide and show you. This is what the, the rule looks like in the J Developer, in the Design Time J Developer tooling. Um, in BPM, we call this the BPM Studio. So this is a, uh, I, uh, the IDE, or it sits on your desktop, but the tooling sits on your desktop. And then let's go to the composer again. This is the tooling that you run from your browser. So it's a little bit cleaned up. It's a little bit more business friendly. But it's basically the same table and the same functionality. Um, so a composer, as I said, is when you're editing the rule that's been deployed already uh, and you want to just 
maybe tweak some values like what is the sale, during sale, after the sale, whatever. BPM Composer allows you to author tools from scratch at design time, and then when you're ready, you can deploy them and run them. So this is decision tables in a nutshell. And that's the end of the discussion for decision tables. If you'd like to find out any more information, you can go to any of our feeds. Um, probably want to start off at the blogs because there's lots of good information there for how to do things and announcements and things. Of course, announcements will also show up on Twitter. And these are our other locations where you would like to find out more information. So come and visit us. And uh, thank you for listening.